Hey guys, today we're gonna to play a game. Now the game is called Fuji Film Camera Shoots Film. I don't have a better name for it. This is a great game if you're like you're in a photo club or you have a friend and you're gonna go shoot and you don't know what to shoot. Uh, we're gonna pretend that our Fuji Film cameras shoot film only. Now you can do this with any camera, but we mostly have Fujis on this channel, so we'll mention um, adapt it to your camera if you want to play the game. If you've only lived in the digital world, you have no idea how tough it, well, unless you're shooting film now, but you had no idea how tough it was to get good photographs. You know, obviously when you shot film, you didn't know what you were getting and later you would get your photos one hour later. Here's a picture of me. Here's me in my first car looking awesome. Whoa, model status. There's me with awesome hair. Look at that, I even had a curl. And all of these, all these photographs obviously were shot on film. And what we did was we went in, um, I grew up in Hoboken, New Jersey. We went to People's Photo. Um, and I think they charged, I, I, I can't remember, but I think it was like six or seven bucks to get your roll of 24 back. Uh, and then eventually we started going to the, you know, the big store started doing one hour photo. And sadly, People's, camera you know you had to get them the next day they couldn't compete with the one hour so they went out of business look at this this was when i started uh getting into photography back then these are my artsy ones yeah that's an artsy corner right there wow artsy artsy but the, there was a great excitement about waiting for your roll of film and picking up the pictures uh and sometimes horror like sometimes you would get the the packet and you'd open it up and it would just be like all underexposed or um, just like all a funky color or something. So it, it was definitely had its positives and its negatives. So let's play the game film. Rule number one, you cannot change your ISO. Set your ISO to something and leave it there. Because when we had film, you had to choose which ISO uh, type of film you would put in your camera. So I set mine to 400 because I wanted a little bit more speed out in the streets in the shade. I had 400 film in mind. Set your ISO and leave it there. Two, set your film simulation for what you want. Set your tones, uh, set, set your sharpness. You're gonna shoot JPEG only. And maybe you wanna do Acros. Um, I did standard film simulation uh, with the shadow minus one. Rule number three, no image review. Old film cameras, you don't know what you were gonna get, so turn off image review. Number four, decide in the game with your friends what is a roll of film. Uh, you could do the standard 24 or 36, or you can shorten the game. If you only got a little bit of time, make it a 12, even a six. Who's in charge? We are. Rule number five, no auto modes. So you have to use your shutter dial and you have to use your aperture ring. Remember your ISO is already set, so those are the three things to control exposure. Rule number six, no using the LCD. Only use the EVF because film cameras all had optical viewfinders. And you, if you have like a, an X100F or a Pro um, X Pro 2, switch that to the optical viewfinder. Some of us don't have that. We only have an EVF. So EVF only. Rule number seven, getting exposure. Now this depends on your level. If you're really good you're, or you want a, like a crazy challenge that will annoy you. If you're intermediate or advanced, turn off image preview. That means that when you're looking through the EVF, it doesn't give you any clue of what your exposure is. So you can only use your needle. So that's the most advanced. Use that if you wanna play the game at its highest level. If you guys are beginners or you're starting out, forget all that, turn preview off. We'll let you, just this one, leave image preview on. That means when you look through the eyepiece, you can actually get a sense of exposure. You'll know if your picture's gonna be dark or bright. Now it is cheating a little bit, but it helps you learn photography uh, what happens if you turn your shutter dial? What happens if you turn your aperture wheel? This game slows you down so you can kind of get a sense, get your exposure right, and then hit click. All right, so I'm gonna play the game. I'm actually on my way to New York and I'll come back and show you what I got. Alright guys, so uh, it's actually started raining uh, while I'm playing film. I took a break in the middle to go to a baseball game. Uh, so uh, I did take some shots, but I didn't count those in the game of film. 
because uh, I just wanted to, it was the first time at the stadium. I didn't want to use that for the film game. So I took a pause. I have six pictures left on there. So, and again, it's starting to rain. The Fuji X-T20 is not weather sealed. So we're gonna do our best just to walk around. We're gonna go to the B&H store. If you've ever been to New York, the B&H Superstore is like Disneyland for photographers. So we're gonna go there too. Six more pictures. Uh, it's raining and the camera's getting wet, but uh, I think I got 24 shots. I don't know. I'll check later. I'll count them. Uh, we'll go over the pictures together. If I get maybe three good pictures like the old days, I think I'll be happy. <laughs> but we'll see together what happened and what I was thinking. But it was really tough. It was, um, there were so many pictures that I wanted to take, but just knowing I had one roll of film, it it definitely is so much harder and super respect to the old photographers, the old street photographers uh, that took rolls and rolls and rolls of film that probably wasted uh, just to get one shot. So it was a learning experience. I hope you guys try it. Hope you have a good time. Let's uh, we'll talk back in the office. Let's go. All right. So it did not start well, guys. I took this photograph thinking it would be really great. Uh, part of it was street photography. The guy kind of was uh, looking around. I, I thought the smoke would be cool. And uh, it looks like the picture came out overexposed. I had number two, I decided to try a nice, uh, easy, safe shot of these buildings. I thought the stripes looked cool because of their angle. That worked fine. I set up low to the ground and I kind of cheated here. I used my little flippy flip screen. I forgot the rule, the EVF the EVF rule, sorry guys. So I used the flip screen here, totally cheated. And I was going for this, but I actually tried a couple of um, different exposures. So I tried this one and then I took another shot and then the third, kind of what I was going for, a little motion of people. Not bad, I mean, I'm kind of happy with these. So here and the, there was a window and I kind of saw these awesome cupcakes. I wanted to see how I did. I uh, set my exposure needle to kind of, um, I pointed it at the frosting so that it wouldn't be blown out. And so I kind of um, just kind of took a reading off the frosting and then uh, made sure to go over one stop of what the camera told me because it wants to remember a camera's meter wants to make everything gray. And so I did one stop over, like if it was snow, just make the whites a little brighter. And I think I'm, this is like great exposure. This is shot through a window, so it's not super crispy crisp but I'm happy with the exposure that I got from it, which was great. Uh, this is underexposed. I tried to take a cool shot of, of the police officers here. This would have been a great black and white too. This is a misfire. Do, what I was trying to do here was, I was shoot, you can actually see me on the left here. I was trying to take a cool like inception shot of, of reflection. What I needed was someone interesting to cross. I took another shot. I, I wanted to you know, take a picture of the bus. And this is one of those moments I felt that I was wasting film. So I kind of stopped and started walking around again. What was sad was like two seconds later, this super interesting woman crossed the street with like crazy purple hair. I think it would have been an awesome shot, but. All right, so here I was going for some slow shutter speed stuff. So I turned my dial to 15th of a second. I had to pre-focus here and uh, it doesn't look good. It looks like it's kind of messed up, but this one's better. This one's a little sharper. I kind of focused, it looks like I focused on the building here, but again, 15th of a second getting, I wanted some kind of yellow cab blur. Uh, not great, but whatever. This screen had cool things going on there. So I had to battle between like getting a cool person that was walking by and also something cool on the screen. I waited a long time and I didn't really get a good combo. So uh, again, this is, this is the thing with film is I, I only was gonna take one shot. So uh, low to the ground again, uh, I set my shutter speed to 500 here. So I turned the dial to 500 knowing that I would have to freeze. I saw him coming down the street. So I set to 500 and uh, don't, you can't really have auto focus here. I set manual focus, set it to the white line uh, or a little bit before the white line, kind of around the street. And then just when he came around, just fired um, and made sure, and the exposure is pretty good. I mean, 
in the dark room. If I had to lighten up this picture, you could do it in the dark room. Uh, so, but I was happy that I got something. Uh, this was a street photography moment, um, definitely underexposed, but could be fixed up in the dark room. Here I was going to go for a silhouette, and so I was setting my meter to the sky. Uh, I kind of wanted the building to be as black as black. So here I am at B&H. This is uh, trying out the 90 millimeter f2, which is like incredible lens. And you can get really close with this lens, so don't own it. Love it though. Uh, and shot this one as well, set my needle, the exposure based on the lighting that was at B&H. Uh, but they give out these candies for free. If you're ever in B&H and you want a little, you know, see cool camera stuff, but you need a grape candy, B&H, baby. And then here I was uh, using the 18 to 55. I saw this uh, biker coming down. It didn't really work, it's overexposed. So it was just too quick of a moment to get with film. And then here I was going for artsy. I wanted to be in the picture. Uh, I am in the picture. Uh, it looks like I misfocused. Damn! <laughs> this guy was stopped at a light in the rain. So I thought this was a fun shot. Uh, I used my 55. I zoomed it all the way, the 18 to 55. Here I use the Rokinon. Uh, I was getting the hang of it by this time. You know, by the end of the roll of film, I was using the needle for exposure. And then here the camera was getting wet. You could see it's raining. Um, this guy had a cool rolly suitcase. I figured this would be an awesome black and white or something, but I was shooting color. <laughs> Gosh, this is adorable. And then one more biker coming by. I, I just really quick, uh, I had to catch my bus, so I switched it to 30th of a second. Uh, again, the Rokinon was trying to pan. I'm really bad at panning, so I'm like, let me just try. 30th of a second, it's blurry, but you know, if you black and white this, you could just call it art. The game that's sweeping the nation, Fujifilm film cameras. So I'm not gonna shoot film, I'm sorry, but the game definitely taught me a lot. It was frustrating. I think what was more frustrating than missing shots was actually holding back and not taking shots, knowing I only had one roll of film. It was really tough. I mean, there were moments where I wanted to try, but I kind of held back knowing that I wanted to uh, get better pictures. Also, there was pressure to like make better pictures for you guys, and I didn't want to be embarrassed. If you liked the video, hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.